attendees are in listen only mode. So I'm Richard Six, uh, Vice Chair. As Mr. Uh, Chair Moore is not here today, I will be uh, running the meeting. And the first order of business for the Architectural Board of Review for March 22nd is the roll call. Thank you, Vice Chair Six. This is Mary. I'll go ahead and take the roll call. We have Vice Chair Six. Here. Board Member Anderson. Here. Board Member Black. Here. Board Member Olson. Here. And Board Member Whalen. Here. And Chair Moore will be absent today. We have, and we have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. So uh, we'll move on to the next uh, agenda item is uh, public comment. Any member of the public can address the board up to two minutes on any subject within its jurisdiction that is not scheduled on this agenda for public discussion. So will you uh, take it away, Christina? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Uh, at this time, I do not see any members of the public who have uh, logged into the webinar to make any public comment, but I do believe we've received some written public correspondence and I'll have Mary. Um, yes, thank you, Christina. We did receive general written correspondence from Richard Clausen and it was distributed prior to this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll close the public in general public con comment portion of the meeting and uh, move on to the approval of the minutes. minutes. First minutes will be uh, the full meeting of March 8th, 2021. We accept the minutes as approved, as presented. Second. Uh, Mr. Olson, Mr. Black, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call. All right, um, I'll go ahead and start with Vice Chair Six. Here, uh, uh, yes. Thank you. Um, Board Member Anderson. Yes. Board Member Black. Yes. Board Member Olson. Yes. And Board Member Whalen. Yes. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Our next is the approval of the consent calendar for March 22nd. Can we put that up on the board? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Uh, today's consent calendar was reviewed by board members Waylon and board members Olson. Uh, project A, 100 East Haley Street re received project design approval and final approval with the project compatibility analysis being met. Item two, 712 West Annapamu received um, a, a continuance uh, with some comments. Item C, 125 Gray Avenue received project design approval with the project compatibility analysis criteria being met. Move we right. accept as presented. Uh, Mr. Olson, do I have a seconder? Second. Mr. Whalen, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call. All right, I'll go ahead and start with Vice Chair Six. Yes. Board Member Anderson. Yes. Board Member Black. Yes. Board Member Olson. Yes. And Board Member Whalen. Yes. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Do we have any announcements, requests by applicants for continuance and withdrawals or in future or future agenda items and appeals? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. I do have uh, uh, the announcement that Chair Moore will not be in attendance at today's meeting. Uh, I also have another announcement which started today. Um, the pu public comment is now going to be put onto our website. Um, you may have noticed that today that the links that were sent to you uh, with the public comment for general public comment as well as public comments for items on today's agenda um, forwarded you just a link and that link is accessible to 
any mem member of the public. So this has been sort of a long work effort on cities, uh, the city's part, and just wanted to report that that's now come to fruition. I appreciate that that's been done. Uh, I think it's essential and I, I very much appreciate it. And I think the public will appreciate it also. Thank you uh, for your efforts, Christina and staff. Um, any subcommittee reports, uh, just to report that the uh, Highway 101 Working Group is uh, uh, working along fine. Um, we're uh, proceeding well and have uh, a, a good working relationship and uh, be excited to bring it toward to the board for some initial comments uh, soon. I have one question for staff. This is Leon. Uh, Christina, we uh, talked a little bit uh, the last couple of meetings about uh, bump zone design uh, issues. And uh, you had said you thought perhaps uh, staff would be able to present something to us regarding that. Well, thank you, board member Olson. Um, uh, Tony Bauman, Irma Unzueta, who is the design review supervisor and myself, we actually met with Jamie Dufek, who is the arts, the executive director of the arts fund. Uh, we met just to discuss the, uh, the status of the funk zone art, art project. Um, sorry, it, it, it has gone through the years under different names. Um, so right now I'm just calling it the funk zone mural pro program, just to for ease of this. Um, we don't have like a formal uh, presentation um, to present to you today as we just met uh, late last week, but I just wanted to assure uh, board members that we are meeting with the Arts Fund and seeking uh, direction on on the, uh, the process for murals in the funk zone. Uh, thank you. I'm not sure now how that might affect the project that was before us uh, that did entail uh, murals. Uh, I'm not sure the status of that project or whether it's awaiting this uh, decision or not. Thank you, board member Olson. Uh, that project, uh, at, uh, I believe 20 to Anacapa or perhaps 11 Anacapa, um, it's still in for its land use approval. So it has quite a ways in front of it before it needs to sort of know for sure. And I think we it's not appropriate to talk specifically about that project um, because it's not agendized, but in conversation with the um, speaking generally with the funk for the arts and with the arts fund staff, uh, we did bring up the idea of it Sometimes projects might come through with murals and sometimes they might not have their approvals without knowing what it's going to look like before that. So this, uh, the case planner, Tony Bauman, brought that information to the applicant for them to discuss further. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions or conversation beyond our first agenda item? I don't think so. So I think we can move on to our first item. First item is 920 Summit Road. Project design approval is requested. Proposal to permit an as-built family recreational site improvements to the event lawn of the Montecito Country Club. The project includes permitting a children's sliding hill, three athletic hard courts, sand volleyball court, turf soccer field, batting cage, and unroofed trellis, 1,300 1, linear feet of dry stacked boulder retaining walls and related directional signage, hardscape, landscape, and grading. The community development director must find the project to be in substantial conformance with the original project approval under PLN 2005-00831 and feedback from the planning commission on the requested changes is required. Today 
uh, project design approval is requested. Project requires consistency with the project compatibility analysis criteria. So do we have our applicant here for this project? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Thank you very much. I wasn't sure if um, staff wanted to make any comments before we started all our commission went. Thank you, um, Mr. Welton. And yes, uh, Vice Chair Six, I am the case planner for this project. And I just had some very brief comments before you um, go into the applicant portion of the presentation. Um, so as noted in the project description, we're here to discuss as built uh, recreational site improvements that were constructed at the event lawn of the Montecito Country Club. Um, and as mentioned, this area was previously approved and permitted as an event lawn, which is designed for weddings and other occasions. Um, previously, the ABR did look at a reduced recreational uh, improvements concept. Um, that was August of 2018 for this location. And we do have the plans um, available today if you do want to review those. Um, however, the project before you today does include a larger set of improvements um, that are as built and do require ABR approval of the aesthetics. Um, as noted in the project description, this project also requires a substantial conformance determination by the community development director. So following ABR's review of the project, uh, this will go to planning commission for a discussion hearing of the SCD request and PC comments will then be provided to the community development director uh, for the ultimate decision on the substantial conformance determination. Um, and as noted in the footer, this project is eligible to receive project design approval today. However, I do wanna note that any approval would be contingent upon the final granting of the SCD. And I am here for any questions. Yes, Ms. Palmer, uh, uh, is it, uh appropriate for us to uh if if we indeed grant project design approval is does wouldn't that be after the substantial conformance uh review and planning commission review so uh mr six as i noted you can grant project design approval um it would be appropriate at this hearing as this project is at that stage However, your approval would be contingent upon it. So if it goes to planning commission uh, for their comments and an SCD is ultimately not granted, the approval you granted for design approval would not be valid. Um, so it's at your discretion. Um, if you decided to not grant project design approval at this hearing and just continue it, you know, um, it would still go to planning commission. We would still review the SCD and it would still require to be required to come back for design approval at a later date. Um, so it's ultimately at your discretion. So we don't have to fiddle with uh, the wording that says it's ready for uh, project design approval. We can just give it approval. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If uh, the applicant will make his presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice tweak. I appreciate that, that uh, information, Pilar. Thank you. I guess I'll just add to what uh, she said in that you did review this, this board. I don't think, although I don't think any of the members present were actually there in, in August 2018, um, did grant final approval of the revised of the previous plan, which went to the Planning Commission for review and then was ultimately approved by the City of Santa Barbara. Again, my name is Steve Welton with SEPS. Um, the agent for the owners with me today is Timothy McBroom, who is the director of agronomy for the Montito Club. Sam Mathis is the landscape architect. As well in our audience, we have Jeremy Saltz, our project engineer, in case you have any questions in that regard. Um, with that, I think we'll just have Tennessee give a few words and then hand it off to Sam to walk you through. We have um, photos of the as built as well as um, the previous plans we can go through to show you a side by side. And then um, anything give you an explanation of, of how the project got to where it is today. Thank you. Tennessee. Hi. Hi, my name is Tennessee McBroom. I'm the uh, golf course superintendent, and uh, I was a uh, part of the project here um, up the upper event lawn, family recreation area. Um, well, our, our goal was to to um, provide a little more space 
and uh, expand upon the outdoor recreation areas that we had um, previously that were approved. And uh, by adding uh, you know, two pickleball courts, um, expanding the, the children's sliding hill and, um, and, and also adding a, a batting cage. Um, so that's kind of what we did along with, uh, we reduced some of the turf size area, including some synthetic turf on the new design and uh, we replaced it, all the Bermuda with Paspalum turf, which is a, a highly drought tolerant turf superior to the Bermuda species. Um, so that's kind of the baseline of, of our project, um, adding outdoor, additional outdoor recreation areas, you know, through this COVID time is part of what um, has been a lot of requests by our family members. And um, that's kind of what we have done here, um, so forth. Great. Um, Sam, there's some photographs here. I thought we'd walk you, have you, uh, walk you, walk the board through those going from west to east. Yes, thank you, Steve, in Tennessee and Chair Six. Um, so the yellow area again is the event lawn above the tennis court area. And we had a pre-approved uh, golf co course simulation type uh, cages up there before. So those were approved, that structure. We had a basketball court and a lot of paving up there in the previous design that you saw. And what we did was in light of wanting to expand the recreation, as Tennessee mentioned, we have additional pickleball courts, a stand volleyball court, and a synthetic mound, if you will, that allows the kids to slide on a disc and allows families to enjoy the, the openness of that area as a family participating event lawn. So if you wanna look uh, the next photograph, I'll show you that we did hand the lawn and we continued some dry stack boulder terraces that we have uh, throughout the whole garden area in the parking lot below the clubhouse in the entry area so this this really continues a lot of the same style of stone and masonry that's in and around the clubhouse and this allowed terracing planting of bougainvillea and rosemary and spilling salvias to be kind of concealing and softening these terraces if you want to move to the next slide The next photograph, thank you. That kind of is just a further western side of some of the existing plantings. This shows the stone wall. It's kind of a 30 inch wall, freestanding wall, so that the ball play areas won't lose the kicking ball, soccer ball, the kinds of things that might roll onto the service road or get caught in the plantings and not be able to be found. You can move to the next slide, please. Marks there are kind of uh, portraying the badminton courts, the little soccer goals. Uh, they're painted out uh, for special events. These are there for, again, more or less the family play type conditions. So those are part of the stone walls you're seeing there that were mentioned before. Next slide. It shows the expanse of that event lawn for gatherings and celebrations and weddings, as you will. That was always part of the original approval. It continues to be the full reason for this lawn. Next slide. Now this shows more of the concentration of the sand volleyball court. To the left, barely in frame, is the mound of synthetic turf. And it's kind of a continuated green grass area. The pickleball courts are concealed with a small low hedge to contain some of the balls. Um, basketball is in the center, and you can see that the trellis and the batting cage are pushed against the slope and really hidden by tall existing uh, islands that's been there for over 20 years, that ground cover. And what's nice about these profiles sure that nothing blocking or the the views from the neighbors up above kept that as uh, as a good any of our improvements next slide again this shows a view of the court and just the grade change really does conceal us and batting cage exists an existing tennis forum, existing occasion. Next slide. So 
more of the same, the additional east side pickleball. The passport pass that NAC mentioned is in the foreground and again, very drought tolerant and that surrounds this. We had previously uh, had a lot more brick and, and walkways and this felt just so much more soft and friendly to the uh, to the play activity. You can see all the existing planting and how can and layered it is towards the residential side of the property. Next slide. The little stair behind the golf cart is really the only hard court use for walking or stepping up into this area. The rest of it is all very flat and low profile and again just a, a an event lawn for recreation and for gatherings easter egg hunts weddings all the good things that families would enjoy at a club like this next slide that may be the last one okay that shows a little bit of shade sitting area for resting and leaving your water and your paddles at the pickleball courts very minimal, very small structures. Next slide. Is Sam, uh, Mr. Mathis here halfway through your presentation? Okay, let me just draw a quick conclusion. If you have any questions, uh, the plan was drawn to account for the as-builts. Uh, the landscaping is all drought tolerant and, and uh, specifically the lawn is very drought tolerant species and it ties in with uh, all the existing terraces and landscape that's already in the clubhouse area. So I guess we'd leave the rest of the time for any questions that you might have or Steve, you want to fill in on anything else that I might have missed? I think you, you still have seven minutes, Sam, if you want to just run through the drawings, I think that'd be fine if you should have time. Well, let's Let's go ahead and go through the, the as-built drawing then. This one is the main, shows you that, that general area of effect. Notes, grading plan. Okay, it's a little light on my screen, but you see the two pickleball courts, you see the basketball court, you see the, the kind of serpentine and or curving terraces at the far west side those terraces step up and are planted out for that lawn continuation to add a badminton court, to add a little bigger soccer field, to add a little bit more of a observation area uh, off the end of our lawn. It always had been lawn, just extended a little further to the west. And we added a few more courts for recreation, as you can see the, the two structures, the batting cage and the trellis are tucked up against the existing grade to conceal them, everything else is low on grade. Structures are all very, very concealed and hidden up there. That event lawn is very historic. It used to be uh, grass tennis courts uh, in the early days for competition uh, in the tennis realm. So again, the walls match much of the stonework that's throughout the whole property. Um, the ball courts are, uh, are again flush to grade. The sand is inlaid and sunken and flush to the grade. Much of that whole back area is synthetic material so that it needs no maintenance, no watering, no fertilizing, no mowing with very low, low maintenance. The front lawn matches the lawn of the golf course, which uh, Tennessee mentioned is a special paspalum platinum very salt tolerant, very low spreading grass that needs very little water and is very, it, it, it functions very well with reclaimed water, which is what's used on the golf course. I think we have the, uh, the as-built drawing, or the, the previous drawings too available. We could just show you in, in comparison to what your board reviewed previously. Take a quick look um, at that. Kim, if you have those available. Yeah, you can see that the, the golf cages or the practice facility was in the same corner as the batting cage. The basketball court is in the same place centered in, in place of the patio in front of the golf uh, practice facility. It was a brick patio and now it's a pickleball court. You saw the additional pickleball court to the west 
and the, the volleyball court to the west of that. And you see the brick walkways and stairs that were quite a bit more extensive. The lawn felt to be much more soft, as I mentioned, in part of something that the owner and the uh, management decided was a good way to pursue this area in a soft, more natural way. And my apologies for not including a photograph of a sliding hill, but if you uh, can envision the one at the uh, zoo, it's similar to that. All right. And again, it's it's tucked up against the hill, so it's very much buried against the grade. It's not something that sticks out like a little town by itself. Okay. Is that the uh, is that your presentation then? Yes, yeah, so and we do have our civil engineer available to if there are any questions in that regard. And Tennessee, Sam, and myself are also available to answer questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. With that uh, conclusion, we'll uh, open the uh, meeting to public comment on this specific item. And uh, Christina, will you guide us if there is anyone? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Uh, I do see a member of the public that has raised their hand who would like to speak on this item. Um, but actually, I did want to check with Vice Chair Six and the board about an issue, an issue related to this. Um, as you know, starting today, which was the first day, we were able to put public comment on our website for people to view in advance. Um, the, the public commenter has also actually provided that information to staff in advance. For, so that information is also available and we can access it during the meeting. Um, that is at the chair's discretion on whether or not you would like that information available during the meeting. Uh, just so you know, from staff's perspective, it's incredibly difficult to meet that sort of turnaround time. We were able to accommodate it this time, um, but we do have it available and it's up to the chair and the board if you'd like to see that while the... Um, the member of the public is uh, commenting. Is that, uh, uh, Ms. McGuire, is that the uh, comment on uh, accessible parking? Yes, that that's right. the, the public commenter for that. We do have that available um, that we can share on the screen for the board and the public. It's the same information that was uploaded on the on the website. Um, so I'm just seeking clarification on that from the board. I think I think that the issue will be um, uh, obvious in the uh, applicant's presentation of the prior uh, uh, um, plan. So and I plan to bring it up. So we don't we don't need that uh, to bring up the. Uh, uh, exhibit. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Six. Um, at this time, I see that there is a member of the public that has raised their hand. I will unmute you. And at this time, you will have two minutes to speak to the board. You'll need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Who is it? Who recognize anybody? No, I have David. Hello. These are all board members. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, everybody. This is Will Railing. I am speaking on behalf of Accessible Santa Barbara, which is an unincorporated nonprofit association. Um, so uh, for future reference, and I really appreciate staff's uh, efforts here, but I do think it's important. I, I really uh, think this new system is great of having public comment posted to the website. And if any members of the public are watching this as uh, the recording, um, if you're interested in what I'm trying to explain, you could go to the website and pull up um, the public comment of Accessible Santa Barbara, which has some diagrams which are, are relevant. Um, I do would I would like to suggest for future reference that it's important that a member of the public be able to, um, in their public comment, show a photograph or image to the board, while the same way they would in person, and if the um, when meetings were held in person. Um, so I hope that that is something that will continue to be um, uh, something that the public can do. Um, so I, uh, the first uh, sheet, somewhat hamstrung here without, I, I realize the board members have seen the two images um, 
So, but members of the public possibly have not. Um, my main uh, point um, uh, in the two images I provided was, was first to show what was um, approved by this board in 2018. Um, the, the, the current um, facilities that you're seeing today were partly approved um, back then, but they included accessibility. Um, now I realize uh, that you know this is discretionary design review, not building code review. But please let me explain why I hope today you will request that they come back with a revised plan rather than giving project design approval today. Um, the upgrades to the Montecito Country Club have gone on for years and cost seventy-five million dollars, and this is now uh, quite a different um, plan. They have not received even uh, they never submitted for a building permit for the work that you approved in twenty eighteen. And um, that's why we feel it's uh, important for us to get involved now. Accessibility is required for this facility. It's gonna, uh, and, and so we'd really appreciate to see what that's gonna look like as a design now, um, if that's possible. Um, unfortunately, when work is done without permits, the correct accessibility is, is never provided. And this is no exception as of now. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the opportunity to comment. Thank you very much. All right, do we have anybody else? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Uh, at this time, I don't see any other members of the public have raised their hand in the GoToWebinar to speak on this item. Mary, uh, have we received written public correspondence on this item? Um, thank you, Christina and board members. We did receive written correspondence from Will Railing on behalf of Accessible Santa Barbara and was distributed to the board before this meeting. Thank you. All right, with that, we will close public comment portion and bring it back to the board for questions. Uh, Steve, let, let's, uh, Mr. Walton, let's, um, uh, maybe it will be covered in your uh, the question period. Sure. Vice, Vice Chair Six, uh, at this time, the question the question period is open and we can have the applicant's cameras on for this part. Oh, okay. I see uh, Mr. Walton and Mr. Mayfus, are you there? Yeah, I will come back on. I, I thought you wanted it off, but here I am. Okay, so waiting the wait. the, do members of the board any members of the board have questions on this uh, application? David? Mr. Black? Oh, um, I guess my question was, um, I'm assuming that, that uh, accessibility was not a consideration when these plans were put together. I'm not seeing any. Um, and was wondering, my question is what, why not? Why, why, why wasn't that addressed? If, if I may articulate the question for Mr. Black, the previous plan did show a uh, accessible parking lot, parking space and a path uh, down into the center of the project. There we go on the upper up sheet area. And uh, so if, the applicant can address that, please. Kim, do you want me to talk to that? Speak yes, to that? please. No worries. Thank you. Um, yes, so I appreciate Mr. Rilling bringing this item up and the, the club fully intends to comply with accessibility requirements from uh, building code. And, and uh, I don't know why the improvements weren't installed at, as were identified here, however, um, the intention right now is to provide access. If you go to the previous plan, you can see a, a cut that was provided for a um, golf cart. And since this is a reserved space, the intention of the golf course is to provide access. If you go to the, the previous slides you had upstairs, Timmy uh, showed the, uh, the entire court, entire of that line. On the lower left, you can see a cut for the golf cart. You can enter and bring uh, any guests needing assistance uh, to the event lawn areas in any way in that area. That, that's the intention of the golf course. We intend to follow up with building safety to verify that's an acceptable solution. If not, we'll come back with a solution that does address accessibility fully. All right, thank you. 
David, does that ask, answer your question? Um, you may yes. Want to expand what I told you. Okay, never mind. Um, I mean, is it going to be is accessibility going to be treated as a, a separate element with this with this proposal? I'm just wondering why it's not why we're not seeing it now. Can you describe it the way I email it to everybody? Oh, so my question again is 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 accessibility going to be addressed separately from what we're seeing here today? Is that what you're proposing? Yes. I, uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair, and. and Member Black. Um, yes, we would want to confer with building and safety officials to the CFR proposal to address accessibility is, is acceptable, if, if not um, using a cart path and, and the carts. But if it is not acceptable, then we'll back to you with our next, next review would be a, uh, another route, for example, a ramp uh, for this area. Okay. It, could I, this is Tennessee. Could I make one comment? Yes, go ahead. Um, I just want to confirm um, that this area would be by reservation and appointments by members and or, you know, scheduled private uh, parties. Um, we do have golf cart access and four cart passenger carts that we would escort guests and members uh, via the upper road to that entrance that we built over there on the south, on the northwestern corner of, uh, of the map um, for anybody that's uh, elderly or or has uh, disabilities, we could we could accommodate them no problem. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, that kind of goes beyond the aesthetic concerns we have. But anyway, uh, David, you have further questions? No other questions, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Whelan, I saw your hand raised. Yes, thank you, Vice Chair Six. Uh, my question <laughs> sort of center around one element. Uh, at one point, uh, I heard an area was going to be artificial turf, so I'd like to know what area that is, and uh, or just precisely what is a sledding lawn, and where would that be, where would one sled, sled to and from on this area, and uh, yes, sure. is this a well-posed answer to um, those past time. Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Tennessee. Go ahead. Um, so what, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Um, so what we tried to, to replicate was the same type of sliding hill that's provided at the Santa Barbara Zoo where the children young of ages can go up and, and go to the top of the hill. And it's a very gentle slope and you slide down and, and they have a lot of fun with either a piece of cardboard or a, like a, a, a sliding saucer like you'd see uh, in the snow. So that was kind of our thought was to, to replicate that same thing. Um, my kids love it at the zoo. You know, it seems to be very popular and uh, we thought it would be something for the uh, the youth youth ages that aren't playing the bigger sports on the property. Interesting. But the zoos is not synthetic turf, correct? It is. It is synthetic turf. It is, thank you. So you yeah. have a model. That, that, that really, yeah. that's my only question. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. The zigzag line at the bottom of that exhibit is showing the, the interface between the real turf to the south and then the synthetic turf that goes up that slope so that it's very easy to maintain. And then the synthetic turf wraps around the thin parts of the ball courts because that's hard to maintain with irrigation and mowing and all the latter. So. It's a specific area just in the back of the uh, of the whole event lawn that's synthetic. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. Any other questions? Well, I have uh, I have a question on regarding. Um, so this was uh, you uh, the nature of the ass built you. Uh, just went ahead, the, the uh, applicant just went ahead and, and built this regardless of uh, approvals and, re and just deviated from the initial plan and, and thought it was not uh, radically different than the initial plan, is that correct? 
this is Tennessee, if I could speak. Um, yeah. I, I do want to, on behalf of the club, I do want to apologize. We had a, a previous operations manager um, that was directing this, and, and I was a part of the project the whole way, and, and that gentleman was a, a little overzealous, to say the least. And, um, you know, here we, here we find ourselves today trying to, to comply and, and, and to, to get this uh, to get this approved um, for more outdoor recreation space, you know, as we enter this new world um, where outdoor space is, is uh, very valuable. Okay, thank you. Um, another as built question for, I would guess, uh, Mr. Nafis, your trellis shown here on this plan, is that accurately drawn to what's out there? Yes, uh, Vice Chair Six, this is uh, the exact proportions, the exact height, uh, beam sizes, spacing. Okay. It's 14 feet deep by nine foot six high by 28 foot long. So there's two square 14 foot bays with uh, four by six cross members and six by six beams. It's a lightweight shade structure for older adults to sit and watch the game for kids to sit and have a little bit of climate control during uh, during the hot summertime when there might be a ball game going on. So it's a shade respite area. There's no trees in this lawn. So it okay. really is, it affords a little microclimate adjustment and it's very subtle, as I said. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, that being uh, the extent of our questions, the printed back to the board for comments. Anybody want to go first? Yeah, Mr. Olson. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted, Mr. Olson. Okay. Um, so I, I, I need to a refresh on what we're doing here uh, because it seems like the issue is handicap and accessibility access. So, and, and that is missing from this application. So if we give approval, uh, I, I don't understand quite how that affects the accessibility issue. Oh, that's uh, I think that's a question of the board. I think that is a um, significant question. I, I'm thinking that um, my experience when practicing that uh, the accessibility issues can uh, really be a significant driver of a plan. And it could be even to the point where Lo and behold, you need to have a ramp up to the top of the slip slide <laughs> mound. Um, so um, I think that we need to be careful. And I think that uh, timing wise, that we should consider the extent that uh, accessibility might alter this plan. Perhaps Ms. Pilar could address the question also. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Six and Board Member Olson. Um, so as would typically happen, if you were to grant project design approval at this hearing, and it is scheduled just for project design approval, not final approval at this time, um, if design changes were to happen um, and resulting from needing to improve their accessibility on site. Um, Mr. Welton did say that, you know, they want to check with building and safety to see if their current method would work. If it doesn't, and it does require changes, those changes would need to be reviewed and approved by the ABR. So um, if they're minor enough, it could potentially be a review after final consideration. If it's very significant, um, you know, it could result in another project design approval. But either way, any design changes from what you're approving today would require approval at a later time. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? Mm -hmm. 
I'll, I'll make a comment. I, um, I don't think that uh, it behooves us nor the process to give this design approval uh, and send it on to planning commission and substantial conformance until uh, the accessibility uh, issue has been ironed out. Because I can see uh, a radical uh, uh, alterations to this and have, have a redundant uh, uh, approval and a redundant review by planning commission. Uh, so I would advise that uh, this go to uh, have um, at least an advisory initial uh, comment <clears throat> from uh, the building department or uh, you know the uh, architect of record in regards to what the accessibility does to this plan before we make uh, any motion uh, make any motion. I agree with that. <laughs> so do I. Ms. Flower, do you have a response to that? Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Six. Um, it is your discretion and um, what you want to do at this hearing. And if you would like to continue it for further study of accessibility on site and how they want to address that, um, you know, that is appropriate. Um, I will say that the substantial conformance determination discussion, it's, it's largely related to the use and how that's changed from an event lawn to recreational improvements. Um, I don't know if they're specifically going to be looking at, you know, accessibility and how it functions. It's just the larger, does this, does this change? Um, is it consistent yeah. with the approvals that were originally granted for the Montecito Country Club? So if um, if you do continue it, uh, I would just ask whether you want it to come back to ABR first with um, the accessibility further addressed um, by the applicant, or if you'd like to continue it to planning commission with the understanding that it will have to come back to this board um, for project design approval at a later date. So that is your discretion though. So if we, uh, thank you, Ms. Plummer. If we uh, condition, I don't, I, I don't think I, I might be misconstrued the uh, temperament of the board, but I don't think we're going to give it approval, uh, preliminary approval today. Um, but can we? continue it on to planning commission with the caveat that the accessibility must be ferreted out before it goes to planning commission. And I, think I, that, I, I see I, a very important, I see a very important uh, issue with the amount of hard surface versus lawn. I thought that was what the second alternative that uh, Ms. Pilar suggested to us, which which does seem like the right thing to me. Okay. So is it with, so Ms. Pilar, I think that, uh, uh, Ms. Plummer, I think that uh, it would be appropriate. So you're, su you're not suggesting that we can send this on to planning commission uh, without any, caveat on the accessibility being uh, ferreted out before, correct? Uh, so uh, Vice Chair Six, um, I see Mr. Walton on and I would like his opinion on what he would like, um, but my suggestion was you you have two options. You can continue it to a, another ABR hearing. So you wouldn't be granting project design approval. It's just a continuance to a later ABR hearing or you can continue it to planning commission. So again, no approval granted, but it's continuing it to planning commission for review of the SCD request and including your motion um, that the applicant will need to study and respond to um, the accessibility requirements um, if they are needed um, before returns. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Plummer. Uh, Ms. Welton, uh, Mr. Welton, what would you like to do? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
I think I'll note that I understand your concerns and appreciate them. I, I, I will note that on the previous approval that the, the ramp location and the and the northeast corner of this plan is still leaves room to do that. And the only exception of this plan being the sliding hill, which you noted, I, I, I sort of doubt that they would require uh, a ramp up there, but I acknowledge that's a something you need to consider. But um, my I guess my feeling is that it's likely that we would be able to improve a similar type of ramp system in, in the location available if needed. Um, and so that I, I think it's, there's a very good chance that they'll have a, a simple solution that would fit right in with the existing plan. Well, would you like to, to uh, carry on and go direct to planning commission? Before we would, we appreciate your, your comments on the aesthetics um, and then we would appreciate an opportunity to go to planning commission with the understanding that we, we do realize that there's a, potential risk that ADA improvements could um, alter the plan. And, and those aesthetic aesthetics might change uh, driven by accessibility. Okay, so yes. do, I, do I have a motion? Um, Mr. Uh, uh, Vice Six, actually, um, I would ask if you do send it to Planning Commission um, in a motion today. Um, although you're not going to grant project design approval, it looks like, um, I would still ask that you go through the project compatibility criteria um, as just a form of reference to Planning Commission so they understand what your concerns are and how it complies with the criteria as much as it does. Um, as well as your concerns about the accessibility issues. Yeah. Well, my own, I think it's better and easier if we just have it come back to the board. You all agree? Mm -hmm. I don't want to send it on to the planning commission making the criteria, the criteria, the compatibility criteria without a sense of what impact would have, uh, what the accessibility would have on the uh, on this. Does everybody agree? I would agree with that. All right, so is anybody ready to make a motion? Lauren, and I think it's your turn to make a motion. I, I don't know how to. It's <laughs> pretty easy. Okay. Um, I will try and you can correct me. Um, okay. I move that this project comes back to the board, the full board, for review, um, uh, assuming that they will update their plan to incorporate accessibility and I think that's it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, do we, do, uh, 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 thank you, Mr. Olson. We have a second under further discussion. Uh, first of all, I think we need to say indefinite continuance. Ah, yes. And do you want <clears throat> also Lauren to make a comment on uh, the existing as built aesthetics that they're gener that they're generally uh, they're they're gen uh, generally acceptable. With the caveat yes. with the caveat of the uh, impact of the accessibility issues. Yes, that's fine. And board member Anderson, as well as uh, Vice Chair Six, um, because due to Permit Streamlining Act timelines as well, um, we do need this continued to a date certain, um, whether it be two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, something like that. Um, All right. So uh, I think we have to check with Christina and staff on availability of. Uh, to put this on the on on the agenda. Thank you, Vice Chair Six, um, for full board agendas uh, availability. The next coming are April fifth and April nineteenth. 
So that's two weeks and four weeks. Um, either those days are available and then six weeks out is also available, which is, I don't have it on my sheet yet, but six weeks out is um, uh, May 3rd. So Mr. April 19th or May 3rd. Mr. Welton, uh, would you be prepared in two weeks? You're, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's possible. Um, and so is there an opportunity if we were not able to ask for uh, continuance, Pilar, if we weren't able to, if we're feeling like we're not going to be able to respond in two weeks? Yes, uh, Mr. Weldon, if you're not able to um, address the ADR's concerns um, within the timeline for two weeks, uh, we can have you slated for the four week. So that would be for April 19th. Okay, I guess I'd like to try for two weeks if it's possible, if it's agreeable to the board. Hey, Ms. Anderson, you want to define yes. your... So indefinite continuance, no, continuance to the April 5th board in two weeks. Thank you. Seconder, okay? Yes. All right, yes. I think we have a motion. All right, this is Mary. I'll go ahead and take the roll call vote. Uh, we have Mary, would you read yeah. please? Could you read back the motion to us, please? Yes, no problem. Um, so the motion is to continue the project two weeks for return back to the full board with the following comments. Number one, the applicant shall update the plans to incorporate accessibility. And number two, the existing as-built aesthetics are generally acceptable with the caveat of the impact of the accessibility issues. All right, thank you very much. All right, um, so I'll go ahead and start with Vice Chair Six. Yes. Board member Anderson? Yes. Board member Black? Yes. Board member Olson? Yes. And board member Whalen? Yes. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So how are we doing with timing? We're good. Next item is four o'clock. All right, so I think we can uh, go ahead and address the next agenda item. This is uh, 825 De La Vina Street. Final approval is requested. This is a proposal for a four-story mixed-use project on the site currently developed with a private service level parking lot using the average unit density size program. The project entails construction of a 19,767 square foot, 21 unit rental complex with 380 square feet dedicated to commercial floor area. Unit mix includes five, two bedroom, 10, one bedroom, and six studio units ranging in size from 482 to 1,419 square feet with an average unit size of 775 square feet. Two of the units will be designated for inclusionary housing. The proposed density on this 14,625 square foot lot is 62 dwelling units per acre on a site within the priority housing overlay, which allows between 37 and 63 dwelling units per acre. The proposal also includes 23 parking spaces and 32 parking the bike parking spaces. Final approval is requested, requested, and it requires compliance with the plans granted uh, by project design approval on January 29th, 2021. So do we have there, thank you. So the motion was the board approves the waiver for the mechanical equipment. The board found the compatibility analysis to be general, have generally been met uh uh in, in staff did we formally i guess we did formally it says generally have been met staff did we uh formally 
uh, approve the compatibility analysis criteria? That is correct. They received project design approval at that January 29th, 2021. Okay. I guess, yes, thank you. Uh, number three, the screening of the transformer fencing should be return, return should include a return of some depth. The garage door shall be defined and presented in a more comprehensive way to reveal its character, material, and disposition. The applicant shall include a soffit at the opening of the garage. And the board appreciates the responses to the applicant, responses of the applicant to the board's previous concerns. So do we have our uh, applicants here? Good afternoon, Mr. Giza Vincenti and Mr. Stroh. All right, there we go. Audio on. Good afternoon, uh, Vice Chair Six. Workers are here, and I think we're ready. Our landscape architect. Yep, I see him signed in. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. So yeah, thanks for reading the minutes. Um, yeah, it's been almost two months, so great to be back here again. And we uh, diligently at wrapping up our engineering and finalizing our final package for you all today. So uh, my introduction is going to be very quick because we have <laughs> just a lot of details to cover. Uh, so I've got myself, uh, Mike Stroh, uh, other, my other partner, is presenting today, as well as Guillermo Gonzalez, landscape architect. So we've completed the design and the materials in this package, and we've developed all the exterior details to present to you today. And we've addressed a few minor comments you had, and uh, our engineering is, is, is well progressed, so we're gonna be uh, able to submit here, initial submittal, building department in short order. And so we're here for final, present to you for final today. So let me just, uh, let's go to the next page here. Uh, pausing here, not much to know other than we really haven't just changed the square, uh, project statistics. The unit counts the same, the bedroom counts the same, the size of the units, the average uh, parking count, all of the project statistics really are the same. So this has just been completion of the aesthetics. And so if we need to come back to this sheet, we can certainly do so. Uh, but really the project is as you saw it last time. Next. Our photo context photos, move on next. Here we've got some specification sheets for some roofing and then a garage door. We can come back to that next. We've also got two sheets of code analysis as well. Let's go uh, continue on next. In case we need to look back at these, but they're really for the building and fire department as well as elevations for code analysis. Next. Site survey, the existing next. And, okay, civil stormwater. So let's go ahead and, head and zoom in here. So there's really no change here to what you've seen. All the materials are the same. The landscape architect will show you that. The bottom of the page, though, are the details for uh, stormwater paving to meet the creek's requirements for stormwater. You can just see the details at the bottom. Thank you. So these are the technical details to the right for the pavers, for walkways and driveways, and then two of the biofiltration planter boxes. These are here if you refer, want to refer to those in more detail. So creeks has signed off at this point uh, for the project to get final approval. So let's go to the next page, and I think with that, uh, one more, that's just erosion control. I will pass it to Mike Stroh to take you through the comments uh, from last time. Good afternoon. Um, so again, we haven't changed the plan at all. We've just sort of been enhancing what we what we had the um, and and obviously adding a level of detail uh, sufficient for design and working drawings. If you could. Um, Actually, just zoom in on just the front section of the building as it comes off of De La Vina. Uh, basically, so the driveway configuration into the garage door hasn't changed. The entry hasn't changed. Um, but there's, there's sort of two factors here. 
The garage door is, is obviously significantly set back and there is a soffit now within that enclosure as well as some, a decorative header running across there. Um, and we will be able to see that in section and elevation shortly. Um, and the garage door itself, uh, the specification was back on the specifications page. It's actually a, um, uh, it's, a it's an anodized bronze uh, sort of running bond uh, alum look uh, aluminum door. We looked around at various other projects around town and um, uh, most of them have just a clear anodized aluminum door. We actually went with a dark bronze uh, which we felt would fit better with our um, uh, our materials palette. Page four for this. Uh, sorry if you go to page four you, you can see the specification. Thank you Ed. Uh, yeah so down here in the lower right hand corner um, you can see it's actually, so it's not just a, a, a straight grid of, uh, uh, you know, a, of a pattern. It's, it's actually, and this is the clear anodized shown here, but we're going to go with the dark bronze anodized. Uh, again, to, because it's recessed about eight feet uh, from the face of the building, it'll be shadowed anyway. It's going to be, it's going to be fairly sufficient in terms of screening, uh, not screening, but uh, uh, keeping it dark and kind of go away, if you will. Uh, if you could go back to page 10, please. And keep in mind your uh, presentation time. Uh, understood, understood. So if you go back to page 10, so I want to I want to focus on the upper left hand corner. Uh, oh no, sorry, zoom out. Uh, upper left hand corner. So the the transformer we actually uh, we've we've been working with Edison and our utility consultant, and what we ended up having is we actually have a we essentially have a wood picket fence here that does have a, uh, a three foot, essentially a 42 inch return towards the front door. So as you come down De La Vina, it is screened uh, from drivers. Um, now, right now, the way we had designed this when we submitted, we had a post in the center in front of the transformer with two removable panels. We've since been told by Edison, no, we want gates. And so we actually are in the process of updating the detail. Aesthetically, it'll still look the same. It's a five foot tall wood fence that fully screens the transformer, but instead there'll be two, cane, two gates with cane bolts versus, a, uh, uh, versus these removable panels. And we have a detail for that on the very last page of the, uh, of the set. Um, if you could go there, please. Oh, that's electrical. I'm sorry, back, Ed, do you know what page that is? Sorry. Uh, it'd be about page 60 or somewhere, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, 62. 62, please. Thank you. 62, no, 63. One more. 63. There we go. Now we're running. Okay. Uh, so, you, so if you zoom in there to detail uh, 9 and 10, you can see this was showing the two removable panels that center post won't be there and this will just look like two two gate sections and they'll have cane bolts um, and that'll just be painted fencing to match the uh, to match the building. Uh, if we could go back to page 10 please. Okay, I want to scroll through so, sort of if we sorry if you could zoom out please. Uh, next sheet. Okay, I want to I want to turn this over to Guillermo Gonzalez to go through our landscaping design. Good afternoon. Uh, so uh, since we last met you, uh, we have developed a hardscape more. Uh, we have selected uh, colors, materials, and um, and completed all the uh, backyard and front yard uh, with uh, paving patterns and so on. So um, if you zoom into the front of the building you can see the new uh, hydroflow permeable paper patterns that we uh, introduced to the entry, both for the driveway and pedestrian. Uh, details for that are included on the civil in terms of uh, cross sections. Uh, if we look at the back of the building, which is uh, the backyard, we have uh, again developed the whole area with uh, uh, permeable gravel, uh, benches, fireplace, bird bath, small water feature, and uh, we have details for that to show you in the next page. So the other item, uh, so we can go to the next page, please. 
here we got the uh, details for those uh, benches around the fire pit and also a small water feature to help uh, uh, buffer some of the sounds. Um, if we go to the next page, uh, here is the selection of all the different materials that we are proposing. The planters, they're all prefabricated. Uh, we also have the fireplace, which is a prefabricated gas play, uh, fireplace. We do propose some uh, thermally modified wood for the wood elements. Uh, bird bath, it will be a stone uh, bird bath. And uh, streamlining that we're proposing on the second floor with shielded uh, elements to avoid any uh, intrusion onto the night sky. If we can go to the next page. Uh, irrigation have been developed for the entire site. Uh, it's, it's all drip irrigation and it's been uh, taken to those planters directly from, uh, from, from the first floor. Uh, if we go to the second uh, next page, please. All details are included and water calculations. Uh, if we go to the next page. We have taken the, the planting plan. It seems like it's taking a little bit to regenerate. <laughs> um, but we have taken a, a, the plant pallet and developed a, a complete plant, planting plan for the entire site, uh, including the first, second, and third floor. There is a, a small area planters on the third level. Uh, doesn't seem to be showing that. Seems to be I, stuck in there. I think we, uh, I think we're, Good. I remind you again of your time. I think we need to see uh, some of the architecture. I think we've reviewed uh, personally the uh, landscape plans. The rest of the board has prior to this. So, okay. So I think this complete my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo. Thank you. Okay. So to continue, uh, the floor plans have not changed. So I'd like to go to the elevations, please. If you could go to page 35. That's 30. There, there we go. Okay. Um, so as you can see, what we've done is we've developed our sheets are set up. So all of our exterior materials are, are down on the lower left-hand corner and all of our paint callouts. What we've done is with each elevation, we've gone through and we've detailed each level of trim in the different locations, such as our parapets and our awnings um, and our overhead balconies, um, as well as all of the various trim pieces. You can see down at the garage door, we actually, that actually has a decorative trim piece that, that, that goes above it and that's pushed back. I mean, that, that's all pushed all the way out to the facade. Um, we've got Juliet balconies and trellises. We have trim around all of the doors and windows. We have uh, plaster pushed towards uh, all of the out outboard facades and where we've pushed back, we have the board and bat that hasn't changed. And so if you go to the next sheet, please. Uh, uh, so you can see that we've got, again, we've got all of our paint colors and all of our, all of our materials called out. Uh, all of our details reference. One of the questions came about as to how the facade wall worked uh, down at the podium. We have a sort of a false window and I'll show you that detail in a second. We have a variation between uh, the plaster and the block wall at the podium where we go from 12 inch block to eight inch block. Uh, next sheet, please. Um, and again, this just continues around the building. Uh, next sheet, please. Uh, this is the back of the building. And again, we've, we've, we've gone through and we've, we've detailed all of these elements. Next sheet, please. Uh, the yellow is indic indicative of where Don Sharp's building is next door. You can see that this is all relatively the same, except for uh, on this facade, you actually have the balconies on that north facade. Uh, we've detailed those. Next sheet, please. Okay. And this is the remainder of the building. Uh, that isn't covered by the other other portions. Uh, so, uh, next sheet, please. Uh, so this and this is the interior of the uh, of the courtyard. You can see we've actually got uh, not the courtyard, the catwalks. You can see we've gone back to the board and back. Uh, the soffits on all the catwalks are all plaster. 
On all of our covered porches, they are actually a beadboard siding. And then on all of our eaves and awning overhangs, it's all a one by four TNG. Uh, next sheet, please. Uh, one more sheet, sorry. Uh, here's our sections. If you go to actually the next sheet, we've got a wall section. We've got a number of wall sections, but uh, uh, wall section. This is, three, is this 310? Next page. Oh, next sheet. I'm sorry. In the bottom right, detail number so, one. Or detail, and wall section number one, you can see we've added a soffit that's dropped in there. We have a decorative head running across at the street level with trim, and then there's a soffit at nine foot six, and then there's a the garage door to the header running across, we should have had a dimension there. It's at eight foot six, uh, which matches the front. Uh, next sheet, please. I'd, I'd actually like to go to, if we could go to sheet number 59. The remaining sheets, if you could just skip through them really quick. Here we go, uh, 58, sorry. Um, so these are our general roof details for, for the assembly. We have an asphalt shingle. Um, gutters and things like that. If you go to the next sheet. So all of our eaves, we have um, we have two by eight exposed rafters with a four inch radius uh, at the uh, at, at, at the uh, the ends. Um, we've got half round gutters uh, with round downspouts. They're all th those are all going to be painted. We have a one by four underneath uh, and then a shingle roof above. Um, generally, the, the, the eaves will sit on walls or openings, but we do have some situations where we have porches, so we've got some large columns uh, like you see in detail number five. Um, details nine and ten, along with eleven and sixteen, kind of illustrate how we're doing these sort of heavy four by frames on all of our awnings. Uh, next sheet, please. Um, so here's all our parapet details for how we're wrapping all of our plaster uh, and trim and our trellis pieces and how everything sits on top. We've done trim on all the posts. In the, in the, in the cases where we have a, a lower parapet and railings running across, they just span between columns. Next sheet, please. Um, here's all our balcony and railing details. We've got larger posts with railings between and then flat bar stock painted. Uh, for the intermediates. Um, and then you can also see at detail nine, the step back in the wall where we go from a 12 inch block to a four inch block, or an eight inch block, excuse me. Next sheet, please. Now, Mr. Stroud, do you need another five I need minutes? Another, I need another minute, I'll be done. Okay. Um, so these are some of our remaining details. Detail number three is that false window along that block wall. Um, these are some of the uh, detail number eight is our typical window trim, which is the fiber cement. I want to be clear that all of our windows and doors actually have fiber cement trim around them, and they are all pushed back uh, to the back side of the framing, even where we have double framing, um, to further, you know, essentially create good shadow line. Uh, next sheet, please. Um, and this is our materials sheet. Basically, you can see we have the, we have shingles, we have the um, uh, the paint swatches, and we have a sort of a gray and a and a kind of an off white palette. We are using integral color stucco, as well as um, integral color the the the, the hardy panel. Um, and so we've got the finishes called out between the the taupe and the white. We are using this color raven on the 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 primary uh, unit entry doors is a dark you know, almost dark bronze looking color. The windows are the, the Quaker that you've seen before and they'll be white. Uh, and then we are looking at our lighting fixtures and working with the manufacturer to look at shrouding for dark skies. Um, and then if you zoom out, we have the, uh, uh, it, essentially we've, we've just included the original rendering so you guys can take a look and see how that, how that all relates. Um, and again, you can see how the differentiation between the plaster and the uh, the pushed back sections that are that are the board and back. Um, and with that, the remainder of the set is all of our cons consultant drawings um, and uh, the structural, mechanical, plumbing, electrical. And with that, we are complete with our presentation. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Thanks for letting me go over. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot there, Chair and fellow board members. We're happy to walk you through any of it in more detail. Hopefully, you've had a chance to flip through it. Um, yeah, we skipped about half of it, but it's all in there, so let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.
Uh, with that, we will uh, open up the uh, meeting to for public uh, comment on this specific item. Uh, Christina, can you uh, guide the public in this, please? Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Um, at this time, there are members of the public that have logged in. Um, I just wanna give them a moment to raise their hand if they would like to speak on this item. And while we're waiting for that, Mary, have we received any written public correspondence for this item? Um, thank you, Christina and board members. We did receive written correspondence from Cynthia Gamuccio and it was distributed to the board before this meeting. Thank you, Mary. And I do see a member of the public has raised their hand indicating they'd like to speak on this item. Uh, Gary Yen, uh, I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's, I believe it might be Yen Chinch. Um, I'm going to unmute you and then you will have to un unmute yourself and you'll have two minutes to speak on this item. Hi, Gary Yensich here. And uh, I'm president of 826 Bath Street Homeowners Association, which is the uh, property immediately adjacent to and behind the proposed development. I attended one of the uh, initial uh, pre-approval meetings and asked to be on the interested party list, but I haven't had any more correspondence and I'm only aware of this meeting today because of my neighbor, C. Cynthia Gamuccio. And uh, Apparently I've missed quite a few meetings, but, and I appreciate the, uh, it looks like quite a bit of work has been done and thanks to the board for trying to mitigate and, and keep the standards up um, in the area. My objection is the same objection that I had at the beginning of this project. And uh, that was that the height is not in keeping with the neighborhood. I asked that some of it be put below ground or, it be considered to uh, have a reduced number of stories. In other words, uh, three stories or less, or one of the four stories underground parking would be more in keeping it with the neighborhood. You have to kind of look hard to find another four story anywhere close by. And uh, if you look at the other sort of mixed use building on the corner of, um, Canon Perdido and De La Vina, it has partially underground parking. You know, it's kitty corner. The, uh, the Santa Barbara public market has underground parking. I'm not sure it may legally be okay to have four stories, but not in keeping with the neighborhood. That's my, my major objection at this point. And I'll yield my time back. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Are there any other members of the public who'd like to speak on this item? Okay, I don't see that anybody else has raised their hand. Back to you, board. Thank you, Christina. Uh, so if I can have the rest of the board's videos back on, please. And I will close or the, the public uh, portion of the meeting and bring it back to questions to the, from the board. Does anybody have uh, questions uh, to begin? Mr. Whelan. Yes, thank you, Vice Chair Six. One small follow-up question on the garage door. Uh, am I clear in my understanding that it's a grid and the grid are somewhat brick size that is sort of eight by four inch. Can I take that one, Mike? Oh, are we unmuted? Sorry, okay. Um, yes, they are there. I believe they're nine inch spacing on the horizontal. And I think there's like three and a half on the vertical. Uh, if you go back to it, I believe it's uh, sheet number eight, four. four. It's shown, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's it, so yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty close to a, a, a general running bond. Yes, I I think what is unclear about this illustration that it appears to have a solid a piece behind the grid, but that's not the case, right? That's correct. 
It does Thank not. you. That's really my only question. Thank you, Vice Chair Six. Thank you, Mr. Will. Uh, other questions? Mr. Black. Um, thank you. Um, I don't know why I didn't pick up on this before, but so uh, my question is, um, could we not have moved the transformer back just a little bit, just so we don't have that wood fence directly on the on the sidewalk? You know, if we had a little planting strip fronting the, the fence, I think it would probably be a little bit more attractive as it presents itself to the street. Um, and then the other question I had was, is, is there is there going to be a concern code-wise having a five-foot fence at the at the back of the sidewalk? I mean, typically, on a residential scale, it would be 42 inches. But I mean, I realize you're you're screening the uh, transformer, but um, I just don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. But I'm looking at the uh, the site plan here, and I mean, I see a little bit of green space. I mean, could we have moved the transformer and the and the fence back just a bit, like a foot or two? Um, and just have a little planting strip along the back of the sidewalk just to kind of soften the impact of that wood fence directly on the sidewalk. I can take That's my comment. question. Thank you, board member Black to the chair. So we could go to the upper left hand view. It just has a little more detail on it. Thank you. So the short answer is for the requirements of the clearance, it's a three foot all the way around and then an eight foot clearance to the front side of the gate. So the short answer is no, we can't move it back unless we also move the commercial space back, which is already a little bit, <laughs> it's gotten shrunk as to the versions of the project. So um, that's what kind of led us to this point. Um, and the We've tried to do what you're suggesting and push it back, but the utility does not want planting in front of that, those loading spaces and the fencing. So it would have to be like a low level gravel or something, which we haven't found to be beneficial. So that's why we pushed it forward as far as we could. Um, and then the clearances, as I said, you have to maintain three feet on the three other sides. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry, just to follow up. Uh, so the three feet, you have shown is to the pad. Is it not three feet to the? It's to actually the, to the pad. Um, is the, the requirement. Yeah, yeah, Edison's requirement is an eight foot by six foot pad. The transformer sits wherever it sits on that pad. However, the conduits come up and the clearances are measured from the edge of the pad. And Got we it. verify Thank that through Edison. Thank you. Mr. Black, do you want to continue? Um, yeah, it's sort of unfortunate, but my only other question was, um, sort of a standard question, where is the irrigation backflow preventer going to be located and is, and is it properly screened? Uh, yes, it is located along the front. So if we can slide toward the top of the page, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, if we can go to the irrigation plan, uh, oh. Yes, if we can go to the irrigation plan uh, there, uh, we can zoom, zoom in. Uh, can you go up? So it is, uh, as you can see, it is right there. Uh, okay. It's a screen by planting on both sides, and there is a small tree planted in that area too. So, okay. Feel Good. Thank you. That's all. Right. right. Thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, anybody else? If not, I have a few questions. Um, I noticed that, uh, well, as you know, I've been concerned about the neighbor to the north, um, and you've put, uh, well, uh, you've put a access ladder down right in front of their primary views. Is there any way to move that access ladder to, for instance, uh, have a uh, one hour or three hour access door into the uh, stairwell and to have it uh, in some of, the, uh, some of the blind portions of the, of the neighbor? 
rather than having it right in front of their two uh, views. I just think if you recall, yeah, before we had a door and it was creating that fire access problem. So since this is a maintenance area, we elected to go with proposing the ladder in there. Um, are you asking whether we could sh shift the location of the ladder? Yes. To uh, like under the stair or, uh, you know, I think there's uh, somewhere, yeah, it's somewhere along the blank portion of that wall between the two atriums. So I don't know if you need another access door out of one of the stair landings or whatever. Yeah, uh, to get page 21, I think it illustrates it best. If you could zoom into the north portion just there by the stair, that would be helpful. It's a tricky spot to access. You can see the stair there on the upper right hand side. Um, we're having to go over the planters to get to it anyways. Um, so are you suggesting maybe through the stairwell, if the ladder could be located in the door on that back side where it's less visible? Exactly, right above the title stair, 1, 2, 15. I think we, can, we could look into that. There may be, it's complicated with the code implications, but we'll, we could certainly look into that. Okay, then the, then my other rel uh, related question is, if you just slide over a little bit uh, to the left. So I, if, if I understand correctly, uh, just north of this, this uh, green planter area is is uh, two drains and a high wall. If I follow the sections through correctly, that and I don't understand, is that a, a bioretention water basin that you'd have to have that wall so high, and again blocking and getting more architecture against the view from your neighbor from the north. Can that be, well, first of all, what is it? Let's try to locate that in the plan. I think, uh, I think if you go, know, I think set in section, it reads on, uh, on, uh, Sheet A312, section one. That looks like page 48. Yeah, see, uh, see on the very, yeah. Why is that wall there? I thought, you know, you're, yeah, why? <laughs> Yeah, that may have been added back in. Let me look at the elevation on my screen. Um, that's something we can take a look at, putting a more transparent rail there. I, I see the I see the comment you're making. Yes, we can take a look at that. Yeah, there's there doesn't seem to be any occupied space. They again have to jump over that. Um, that's yeah, I think you're reading it correct, and the planters are held back from there. Yeah, and if wow. if that's the case, if that's the case, why can't you, if we go back to uh, the plan that we were just on, and I can't remember what it was. I think. Page 21. Yeah, if if, uh, if that wall and so forth is redundant, uh, why couldn't you hop over the planter and jog to the flat unoccupied area north of the elevator and send your ladder down there? It, yeah, it looks like there's room there. We can certainly take a, look, a closer look at that. Anyway, I, I appreciate that and I'm sure the north neighbor would also. Um, I just a fast question on uh, 
your beam radius, your ends, I noticed that you had a lovely radius on your standard roof ease, but you chose not to have a radius on your, um, uh, what do you call them, your uh, small um, shed roofs above the windows? Take a look at the uh, page. Uh, 702, I think. Right. 60. Just as we're, just as we're going here, I, I, uh, these these are picayune. Uh, I think you've done a very handsome job on this and responded very well to all of our concerns. But sure. wait, uh, like 09, 010, uh, uh, 10, as opposed to uh, 7, 3, you know, why aren't those radius? And what is it? Just so seem to be. Yeah, part, part, we had an internal discussion about this actually, and, and uh, it was kind of decided that, that the awnings were, were different than the typical roof eaves. And, um, you know, aside from detail uh, 11 and 16, I mean, most, all the roof eaves are two by eight versus our awnings, which are, are, have the little two by four rafters. So we decided not to to radius those. And then because the big awning that's shown in detail 11 and 16, the, which is on the front of the building, because it kind of matches the typology of, uh, and the architecture of the smaller uh, little eyebrows, we, we decided not to to radius that. However, I would, would certainly be willing to go back no, and look at that. I, I, I get your logic, that's fine. Um, if we could move to uh, sheet A206, Mm -hmm. So if we zoom in, yeah. So on the lower three, the lower left-hand openings, there seems to be a extra little corbel there on your um, breast uh, lintel. Is that intended? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It actually matches if you go to uh, back just a couple pages, I think 35. That's all right. I just It matches what we have at the garage and what we have uh, at the punch openings directly above the garage. Okay, got, got it, good. Um, and then if we go back to the, yeah, it's good. Um, we can see it here. Um, I see that, uh, for instance, where detail the line of openings for detail 05A702 is, right, right uh, on the roof, yeah. Uh, that, that detail shows a typical delicate little uh, trim of a column cap where the column meets the beam. That's intended everywhere, right? The graphics here are just weird. That's, that's correct. We've had a lot of we've had a lot of discussion about that little piece of trim, uh, uh, and as we as we finally decided, we, we did decide to put it at the at the top, uh, and it did end up in the detail. It just didn't end up in the model. Yeah, that brings up a good point, yeah. Vice Chair. That yes, we want to clarify what's in the detail is very directly what our intention is. It just okay. has a tremendous amount of effort to bring the model to the same level. Thank you, uh, and and that's everywhere, correct? Yes. That's correct. The details govern. Sure. I see the little corbels now. Okay. And just the one last thing, uh, and maybe David, uh, Mr. Black can help you out. I noticed that, uh, let's, let's go to the front site plan uh, or the blow up of the site plan. Or is that a page 10? So I see that the double check valve, uh, just up sheet a little bit is quite up sheet a little bit. Thank you. 
So the double check valve is quite there. And the only thing I can see in the landscape plan is what's called little red flax lily in front of that. Is, is that going to be adequate screening, uh, Mr. Black? Uh, uh, to, to handle that big monster? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Maybe the landscape architect would address that. Tell me, but tell me that plan. They're, they're, they're three feet high. And as you can see in the drawing right there, we also had to comply with the view triangle. So we, we can't really go beyond three feet because we wanna be able to maintain views out to the street as cars come out of the driveway and the sidewalk. So we have about three feet of planting that could co help cover that uh, fire hydrant. I mean, uh, by flow preventer for the fire department. Okay. I, I think that'll work, Richard. Okay, thank you. All right, those are my questions. So um, uh, do we have uh, comments? I can make some comments. This All is right, Leo. thank you. Really, Mr. Leon. So, uh, first of all, I, I, I think these this project has come a long, long way. I, I think it's uh, quite well done. And uh, uh, I think that for Mr. Stroh's uh, plans and detailing of the plans is exceptional. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it. They're very readable. Uh, and his attention to the details uh, throughout the project, uh, I think it also is uh, commendable, and so I, I want to, uh, uh, to 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 compliment uh, the architects uh, because I believe this has come a very very long way, and it's quite good. I also want to appreciate Mr. Six's thorough investigation of these plans, and I, I do appreciate that, Mr. Six. Uh, because you've spent a lot of time on these plans and uh, I, I, I think it's helpful to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah, Mr. Sure, I'll weigh in. And I would second uh, Mr. Olson's praise of the design and the project's uh, development over time because it does seem to me that this project has been uh, pushed and shoved and massaged and even maligned. Uh, I retain some fundamental um, reservations about the relationship to the neighborhood. It, it is gonna be big, it's a four story building. And in some ways, this is a test of the zoning allowances and their interpretations, um, frankly, I have no great admiration for the building to the north, which I think has unfairly made demands on this project that in my view uh, are shortcomings of that own building. And one of the big assets of this project is it will cover up that south elevation of the building to the north. Uh, I do, uh, for in terms of relating to the neighborhood, I specifically appreciate their designers in interest in designing the podium wall on the south to make it more amenable and approachable to the to the existing uh, neighbor. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Whelan. I, I, had, I, I had one more appreciation that I didn't mention. I, I th also think the landscape architect here has done exceptional job. I think he's go, gone above and beyond what we might expect here. So I, I'd like to voice that appreciation also. I would agree. Thank you again. And any other comments before I make mine? All right, I, you know, uh, I again appreciate the uh, fine design. You know, I resonate with Mr. Whelan's and we've been through that. It's, but I, I think it's a uh, um, path that point to where, you know, the overall mass bulk and scale and the, and the uh, compatibility with the neighborhood is, you know, is stretching it, but this is the new reality of the AUD limits and, uh, 
We're gonna see a lot more of these when we get into our uh, new uh, AUD measured by uh, floor area ratios. So I, I think that if, uh, if this is an example of uh, that size, I think it's an example where uh, good architecture can uh, help uh, mitigate uh, the required and allowed sizes of these type projects. So uh, I, I commend the architect for uh, his uh, dutiful uh, attention to uh, uh, good design. Um, I would hope that if we give it final today that uh, my issues with the ladder and the uh, additional mass against the atriums of the north building can be uh, part of the required uh, approval. And I, I simply think that it could be uh, uh, verified by staff as a condition of the final. Um, so I, I think it's a, a nice piece of architecture, well designed. In my opinion, you know, if I had anything to, to uh, uh, say, it would be that I feel that um, the profile of the molding, typical moldings um, along the parapet walls and the, the balcony walls are a little bit heavy. I think they're nine inches height in the in one part. You know, they're almost twelve. I know that you're matching the balcony edges, but uh, I, I think that they're still a bit heavy and uh, could be lightened up a bit. But that's only opinion, and will we'll not uh, make that mention that in the uh, required uh, restudy but just uh, FYI. I think that those are my comments. Does anybody a wish to make a motion? So I'm gonna just echo something you said uh, again, Mr. Six. I, I do think that the, the building is, is very large and the neighborhood has uh, opposed it because of that. But I think we know that this is what we're in, that this is what's going to happen here in the future. And I think your comments about that we could expect, even though this kind and size of building uh, may, may seem large for neighborhoods, but at least we could expect architects to present good architecture. And here's a case of that. And I, I, I think that's a good observation. All right. Do you care to, for, do you, care to, uh, to fold that into a motion, Mr. Olson? I, I yes, I, I can try. I'll need some help on some, if there are uh, comments that we need to make. I, I move that we approve this for final approval. Uh, and uh, with the following conditions, if someone would like to add them at this point. <laughs> okay. Do I have a seconder? I will second. second. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Whelan uh, won on that race. <laughs> and under further discussions, if uh, Mr. Olson, you would add to your uh, motion that uh the stairway the uh, ladder to the ex access ladder to the no man's land and the, and the north property line between the building to the north be moved to a blank wall portion of the north building and that the solid podium parapet wall uh, adja uh, adjacent to the 
western atrium of the northern property be relocated to where it that atrium is only facing a podium floor edge and that those two items can be confirmed at staff level during um, uh, uh, building plan, plan check review. Are there any others? That's acceptable with me, the maker of the motion. I don't think there is. The second? Sector okay? Yes, the Christine. second is okay. Oh, Christina, do we have any other requirements? Oh, we have a 10 day appeal period. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Six. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, I just was seeking clarification on those two items because as the staff member of this project, those will be things that I'll have to check. Um, and I'm not sure I have the uh, expertise to be able to check those two things. I'm wondering if you might consider continuing this to the consent calendar for the, for the um, applicant to address those two things so that um, a license so that a professional can guarantee that those two things, those conditions have been met. All right. I think that's good, but it will not stop them from uh, submitting. It will be a review after final at consent, correct? Yes, it can be done in, in two two ways. It can be done, you could, uh, it looks like the board is leaning towards giving final approval today with those conditions and then they could come back for review after final and submit that way. I just feel uncomfortable as staff. I, I don't, I just don't have the expertise to be able to, to uh, confirm that those two conditions are, are met on this project. Understand is the first, is the maker of the motion okay with revising this motion to have those two conditions reviewed at consent uh, on a review after final? Yes. A seconder? Yes. All right, there you go. Uh, th thank you, just for clarification, you don't have to actually put the review after final in the motion, just as a condition. And then when when we see it come through on plan check, we won't give it approval until we see that condition's been met. Um, and in this case, it would have to come back for a review after final. I expect a project of this size would probably have several things yes. that get changed, so yeah. Thank you. All right. So, uh, well, if it's okay with the first and second, we'll, we'll drop the after final from that consent review. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we have a motion on the floor. Do I need to read in uh, anything further uh, on that motion? Well, do we want, uh, I was just considering, uh, do we want to uh, include anything regarding appreciation of the design and the uh, and the recognition that the size of the building is significant but is well designed? Yes, I think we should. Uh, per perhaps uh, our secretary can convert that into a uh, readable language. It does such a good job. Yes, I can do that. So you wanna re restate something, Mary, or do you want me to state it for you? Um, can you, yeah, can you please just repeat it one more time? Yeah, so, so an additional comment to the motion would be that uh, the board um, recognizes that the size, bulk, and scale of this project challenges the context of the neighborhood, but is uh, mitigated by the uh, quality of design. Well said. 
All right, thank you, I got it. So we have a motion now. I don't think we need to reread it. I think we always need to reread it. I, I just think a standard procedure, we should All right. Okay. do that. I can go ahead and do that. So the motion is to continue indefinitely to consent for final approval with the comment no. that, yes. We are giving it final approval today. Okay. So the motion is for final approval with the comment that the access ladder on the northern property line between the building to the north shall be moved to a blank wall portion of the northern building and further a solid podium parapet wall adjacent to the western atrium of the northern property shall be relocated to a location where the atrium only faces a podium floor edge. And number two, the board recognizes that the size, bulk, and scale of the project challenges the context of the neighborhood, but it is mitigated by the quality of the design. Um, Mary, can you structure that to where the two minor comments are required are to come back on consent? So for the first comment is we, we granted final approval a comment is that those two conditions come back for review on consent. Okay, I can add that in. Thank you, Mr. Olson, for having us read it back. <laughs> I think it's just absolutely necessary. So are the, those changes are agreeable with the maker. You're the maker. And the seconder? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and take the roll call vote then. We have Vice Chair Six. Yes. Board Member Anderson. I have to abstain. Board Member Black. Yes. Board Member Olson. Yes. And Board Member Whalen. Yes. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. And I need to announce that uh, this is appeal. This is decision is appealable, and the appeal uh, can be appealed within ten days from this date. All right. With that, I think we're complete with uh, today's agenda and. Uh, Goodbye from beautiful Santa Barbara. <laughs>